Welcome back. Here today on the beautiful campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College, we find ourselves in the middle of the summer. It's hot and we're having a ball. Uh, just because the school is closed doesn't mean we're, content we're not continuing with this series of letting you know what's going on in the community. We've got a treat today. We've got Rick Kent, uh, recently award-winning country and bluegrass musician. Uh, several people that I know, actually, including Lamerle Feitzma, who lives right here in Chipley, Florida, uh, got in touch with me, said, uh, you got to talk to this guy. Uh, your show focuses on local talent, on uh, people of note, and uh, Rick is the kind of guy that you're going to want to talk to. Little did we know when we uh, got in touch with Rick and invited him on the show exactly what all he was involved in and to the depths uh, or the extent to which uh, his experience lies. And so we're going to have some fun. When we come back, we're going to talk to Rick about the music industry. We're going to talk a little bit about him. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to focus on local talent. You know, so often we talk about our local athletes, our local scholars. Uh, we have a lot of talented people in this area that we call the real Florida. In this case, we're talking about music and the music industry. And what really appeals to us is that Rick uh, really likes the old country, the old bluegrass. A lot of fans of that genre out there. Judge Perry Wells and Judge uh, Colby Peel, for, to, to name two, certainly, that are, uh, uh, that are inured in that market. When we come back, we're going to talk to Rick about all this and more, and we will be right back. Welcome back. As mentioned, our guest today is Rick Kent. Thanks so much for taking the time today. You know, uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, Lamarle Feitzma, who apparently you go to church with, yes, yes, uh -huh. uh, knew about your recent uh, uh, winning of the award, um, knew a little bit about you, said, listen, you like to get interesting people on the show, you need to talk to Rick. So thanks for taking the time and coming this morning. I appreciate you asking me. Uh, uh, first of all, I'll tell you about my uh, background in some music. Uh, I've been playing uh, bluegrass in old country since I uh, started in 1980 with a, a, a band called uh, Tri-County Bluegrass here in Chipley. We traveled all over the southeast in the United States uh, playing bluegrass music. And uh, I quit playing and started playing some club series and started playing some new country stuff. And I don't like it, I'll be honest. Uh, I like the old stuff. and. The traditional stuff and the acoustic style of music uh, that is my bag is acoustic non-amplified music uh, Perry Wells loves it uh, Kobe Peel loves it it's just pure and simple and natural like you're playing out from under a, a pecan tree or something or other and having a good time uh, that's Let's, uh, we, we just sort of grabbed her open and, and, and we're hanging on here. Let's, let's start at the beginning. Talk a little bit about Rick Kent. You told me that you're originally from this area. I am from Chipley, Florida, Washington County, born and raised in Chipley. Um, I had a small linting shop here in Chipley for a uh, pretty good while. Uh, I worked with the school system some. Uh, I was a interpreter for the hearing impaired. Um, and and have always had a heart desire for my music and i like to entertain people i like to make people happy uh this uh world we're living in now everybody needs to laugh and have a good time every once in a while talk about music a little bit um i had the fortune of of being involved in um, radio and television and during my radio days worked in country music, worked in rock and roll, uh, worked in some other genres but one thing that is true, that was true then and is certainly still true now, any city in any country in the world country music is number one. Uh, it's, it, it's interesting, you can go to Southeast Asia, you can go to Europe, you can go to South America and certainly here in the United States. Country music rules. Yes. If you're a business and you want to advertise and you can only buy one radio station you really can never go wrong with country music unless you sell a product that just doesn't have anything to do with, with the people that listen to country music. I can't imagine there is such a thing, but I'm going to reserve judgment and, and just say that it is a universal format. Talk a little bit about how you got involved in music. Oh, uh, well, like I say, I started with a, uh, with a family members playing music. And what age was that? 
Uh, I started playing guitar at age six. Uh, then I adapted and started playing the banjo a little and I started playing the fiddle a little and the mandolin and uh, dobro and it ranged in from age six till 62. I mean, that's what, what it's ranged from is, is from a child to now. But uh, the, the music business is, um, some of it is not country, so I like to call country. It's all, it's all changed. Uh, used to, you could go in the recording studio as well, as you know, and you had the big reel to wheel recorders, and you would sit down and sing, and then have to reproduce and, 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 and cut it out, and you'd have to come back several times and, and do all, but now it, you, it's digital. Uh, you can uh, cut it back, and, and you can overrule your voice. You can sing harmony like two people singing, and it's just one, and it's you. You can play your uh, my guitar, come back, and I can play lead on my same song. And it, it is totally a different ball game than it was 20 years ago. I mean, let alone 50 years ago. Yes, 50 years ago. You like like the old, old brother War Art thou you went in and sung in a feller's can. You know it was a microphone hanging there. And it, it is totally different. Totally different. I mean it's Well what's interesting in this day and time, with electronic music, with the affordability of digital media, we have some world class music that's being produced yes, by yes, teenagers in their yes, bedrooms. Very 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 good music. Uh, and and I think also to, to your point about the fact that you're, you, you live in that, that older age with the, with the old country and the old bluegrass, is that because of digital media and the opportunity to be able to listen to pretty much anything on demand online, we have more and more young people finding out that there was music before the Beatles. Yes, And yes. that they, they have become more, you know, when you go to a bluegrass concert, many times those musicians are very young, and yet they're playing music that's almost 100 years old. Uh, yes, th th that's the truth. Uh, the, the, I found out, well, I was on uh, looking through the internet, and there's a website that's called uh, uh, Kids for Bluegrass. Uh, they're interested in the older, older traditional music. Uh, there's uh, a lot of websites. I know uh, I'm a member of the uh, North America Country Music Association International, and they are promoting kids, uh, uh, especially ones that plays instruments. Uh, I talked to some of them when I was in Pigeon Forge this past March and, and uh, trying to tell them uh, what not to do by my mistakes and, and to keep it pure and simple and, and just uh, do the best you can and play your music the old traditional way. And it's a dying art. Well, it really is, and it's interesting because with Pro Tools and all the industry standard uh, plugins and uh, digital audio workstations and um, uh, at the end of the day we still rely on microphones and some of the most revered yes. microphones are those which are vintage microphones yes so it's it's interesting and then you've got musicians which in many cases are going back to that old uh, vintage music the old arrangements the old artists um, and then to be able to capture the purity of what they are doing, you really don't need anything else except a clean channel. So despite all of those add-ons, sometimes those add-ons and the availability of the plugins and the auto-tunes and all that really make music a lot more bulky than it needs to be. You talked about the old recording days. When the Beatles were in the studio, they used one, dr one microphone to record the entire drum yes. kit. Uh -huh. Many times now in a studio, you'll use 18 or 20 microphones uh -huh. just yes. on the drums. And so sometimes making those choices in the studio makes for a much cleaner sound and that's how we've got that vintage sound what are some of the artists that you like that you can still get recordings of uh that may have recorded back in those days i know you mentioned hank snow at one point uh hank snow has uh, uh, recordings out uh i like the uh osborne brothers uh their well uh, sonny is deceased now 
Bobby's still carrying on his with Bobby Osborne and the Rocky Top Express. Uh, Jim and Jesse, uh, Mike Reynolds was uh, really booming around here of Florida Panhandle at one time and uh, Jim is deceased. Jesse is still carrying on as uh, Jesse Mac Reynolds and the Virginia Boys. Uh, and uh, my uh, person that I look to about my music is Mr. Mac Wiseman. Uh, I do 90% of my music is his. Uh, he is 91 years old and uh, he is uh, he does a few shows, but not many. Uh, he is very, uh, last time I heard, he is not too good in health. And uh, I, I try to, every show that I do, I do some of his music because it's, uh, they named him The Voice with a Heart. Uh, I book myself as a heart with a voice. So, <laughs> I try, you know, I, I try to bring his music out the way he would want it to be. And uh, his pro uh, producer and promoter and himself uh, has heard me and uh, likes the style of acoustic music, which on some of my shows that I've done in the past, uh, where they say, well, there comes Mr. Mac Wiseman made over again. So I, I think it is an honor. So uh, I really do. I, I I love I love acoustic music. Uh, uh, Daily and Vincent is really wonderful. Uh, uh, Rhonda Vincent is is outstanding. Uh, Marty Rayburn is uh, uh, outstanding. Uh, uh, most of the people that started like Ricky Skaggs, uh, he started playing with uh, a bluegrass music, and and he then he went to country, and now he switched back to playing. Uh, uh, traditional acoustic music again. Uh, uh, Daly and Vincent is playing acoustic. Uh, uh, Marty Rayburn, uh, he started playing country. Uh, now he has come back to playing bluegrass and country mixed. Uh, but most of the people that started out playing acoustic music are coming back to the original roots that they started from. Well, Marty Rabin, uh, for many years, was the lead singer for Shenandoah. Yes, they had yes. A, They had a lot of hits. You know most of those uh, songs when you hear them. Um, they were pretty popular. Going back to the early days of radio, certainly not the early days of music, but the early days of radio, we didn't have uh, channels or stations which were unique to a certain genre of music. No. Everything was top 40. So basically, you could turn on the radio, and you might hear a gospel song, and then you'd hear a rock and roll song, and then you'd hear a bluegrass song, <laughs> oh, yes. and then you'd hear a choir, and then you'd hear Frank Sinatra, and there, everything was kind of a big smorgasbord. You never knew what you were going to hear, but from the radio station's perspective, they were playing the things which they considered the top 40, generally included more than 40 songs, but those top songs were those that in the, on the billboard charts were ranking the highest week to week. I, I don't know if it was because of the advent of FM radio, which certainly had a lot to do with it, which gave us a lot better quality of sound, or if it was just that we had so many more genres of music uh, springing uh -huh. up, but all of a sudden we had just country stations and just rock stations uh -huh, and just yeah. urban stations. And the thing about bluegrass music, if you're in the car and you turn on the rock station or you turn on the urban station and you got kids with you, you're always just one... one step away from being able to hit the button real quick because you never know when it's going to be inappropriate music, when there's going to yes. be something that's said inappropriately. When you're typically in country and bluegrass music, it's safe it's for clean. all ages. It's clean. It's clean. It's really clean. I know I know just some of the uh, uh, rock stuff. I can't understand it. Uh, I don't reckon it's intended for me to. And, and I'm not knocking the kind of music it is because it is music. Uh, but but some of it, uh, uh, the younger uh, uh, kids uh, don't. In my book, does not need to be listening at it. I mean, it's pure and simple. It, it's it's bad. Well, there's an argument that uh, much of the um, harder rock music and certainly some of the urban music, some of the rap, fosters violence and sexism and uh, opportunities yes. for. 
for these young adults to act in, in ways in which their, their, their parents and grandparents certainly would not be proud. You, uh, uh, we, when we made contact with you, um, we found that you needed opportunities. Um, you um, were, in your own words, sort of at your wit's end. You, you had been working with some people, but you needed some exposure, and that's yes, what, sir. what got our attention. Let's take a look real quick. Um, we're going to go to a clip that uh, we recorded with Rick in the studio. Uh, don't judge it on its uh, video quality merits, but rather uh, just an opportunity to sample a little bit of Rick's work. Let's listen to this. Uh, to, we're just going to play a part of a clip here of a song that, that he recorded here in the studio. Let's, let's take a listen to that. As you can see, um, Rick definitely is steeped in that country slash bluegrass uh, world. Uh, it's uh, universally appealing. You mentioned that uh, not long ago you were in a Walmart or a retail store and a little girl uh, <laughs> recognized you. Yes, sir. I was at Walmart and, and, and uh, uh, a kid come up about six years old. She was telling her, the mama says, that's the man that's on Facebook. It's video. I want. Uh, that's him. And and here her mama came over and asked me. Says, my daughter said you was on Facebook page, which I was dressed in a pair of short cut off breeches and a t-shirt. And and I said yes, ma'am. I'm I'm the one that's supposed to be on there. And uh, uh, she uh, says, uh, well, my daughter would like your autograph. And I'm going. Well, just hold a minute. And I run to the truck and got some pictures, promo pictures, and signed one and handed the uh, young lady one and made her day. And, and uh, uh, But the people will see you on Facebook. And also, I'm going to plug my Facebook page. Uh, you can find me on Rick Kent, R-I-C-K-K-E-N-T, Bluegrass, on Facebook. And please go to it. And you can also find me on Rick Kent, R I C K. K E N T Bluegrass Fan Club, and please join. And uh, I have some videos on it, and and you can watch me on videos. And my upcoming events and venues will be on it. And uh, and 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 please, uh, and my phone number's on it. And and you can call me if you would like for me to perform for you. So that's. 
One of the interesting things in the world in which we live today, Rick, is the fact that you're no spring chicken. I've got a few years on you, but you're, you're getting on up there as am I. Uh, we, uh, in this case you, can perform music from a hundred years ago, sticking to those roots of country and bluegrass, but yet use something as new technology as Facebook to promote yes. that music <laughs> yes. and to let people know about you. You uh, mentioned that you are available for performance. Um, there are uh, situations, there are events and, and occasions around this area, this multi-county area. Um, what would you say is your best audience? If uh, somebody's interested in, in uh, using you for their, their upcoming event, what uh, age group or what uh, type of an event uh, would you say that you fit best with? I can play for anybody. I'm glad you said that. I, 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 can, I can play any, uh, uh, like, like, uh, 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 somebody says that I can play from age 8 to 80 so I, I, or older. You know, the younger kids like some of the stuff that I do, uh, some funny stuff, and, and uh, it's unique. And the older people like some of the, the, the stuff like uh, leather edged in black, which come out in the 40s, uh, uh, Soldier's Last Letter, come out in the World War II, uh, uh, Wreck of the Old 97, uh, and then uh, the later on in years, uh, the bluegrass favorite, the ro uh, Rocky Top. Uh, everybody likes that song. You can tap your heels or get up and dance or whatever you want to. And uh, uh, I, I fit all agendas of uh, people. I do a gospel show also, uh, acoustic gospel. Uh, I also uh, do some old country. And I try and uh, even so, uh, I've adapted to some I found that, that, that uh, Mr. Mac Wiseman did some rock, old classic rock. And I have adapted one of my songs, House of the Rising Sun, in my bluegrass acoustic. And it sounds pretty good. I, I do it like he did it, and, and, uh, and people enjoy that. So, you know, a lot of people think that Eric Burden and the Animals actually wrote that song because they were the ones that made it the most popular, but that song was an old standard and was around a long time. A long time. Uh, it was performed in the blues venues, it was, uh, it was, it was uh, played in the, the gospel and the, the country venues. Um, thanks for so much for taking the time today. Yes, and uh, thank you for having me. I'd like to get you back on uh, occasionally and whenever it works for you. Um, I'd love to be able to expose our audience to you and your music. And uh, best of luck going forward. Uh, hopefully, uh, people are going to find out a little bit more about you through uh, our efforts. And uh, uh, if you've got an upcoming concert, uh, festival, if you've got a party, uh, I, I think that uh, Rick is probably a guy that can be had at a reasonable cost. Uh, would that be fair to say? Yes. <laughs> uh, we have a preponderance of talent right here in what we call the real Florida. Uh, if you're a regular viewer of the show, you've seen us uh, bring on uh, high school coaches. You've seen us talk to uh, leaders in the community. And the question that we always ask is to what do you attribute the fact that we have so many talented people coming right out of uh, Holmes, Washington, Jackson, and Bay Counties? And the answer is that uh, our sense of spirituality, our family values, all of the things that makes for that good family unit also makes for talented, uh, dedicated people. Rick's been here for uh, over 60 years. Uh, just one example of some of that talent so often that we have that we're not aware of. Uh, check out Rick. Check him out on Facebook at Rick, uh, Rick Kent uh, Bluegrass. Uh, it's uh, probably worth your while. Even if you don't have the opportunity to book him or to pay him any money, certainly enjoy some of his music. We'll be right back. As a matter of fact, what we're going to do is we're going to go out with one of Rick's songs right now. Uh, so enjoy Rick's music and uh, hopefully we'll have Rick back on soon. We'll be right back. Okay.